mighty oceans washed the shores of this ancient land, which gave to the world one of the greatest sages, Gautam Bhut. India spreads out from the rugged Himalayas in the north to the sandy dunes dominating its western boundaries. It seems that I have stepped into another world, into another time. Embedded deep in the heart of its soil is the history of one of the greatest cultures of the world, resonating with the message of love, of peace, of brotherhood. The message of Gautam Buddha. These sites were the centers of Buddhist learning and culture. Monks and disciples lived here in the monasteries, worshipping the relics of the Buddha contained in the stupas. Each stone that is unearthed tells of how far and wide the doctrine of Buddhism had spread during the times of the Tathagat and later. So I must begin from the very beginning, from Lumbini in Nepal, the birthplace of Prince Siddharth Gautam, son of Shuddhodhan, the Shakya king at ancient Kapilvastu. Today there exists a pillar of Ashok proclaiming in Brahmi script that the Buddha was born here. On a full moon day in the month of Eshak, May, taking a bath in the Niranjan river, Siddharth Gautam sat under the Bodhi tree. Here, under this auspicious Bodhi tree, Shakyamuni Gautam attained Nirvana, divine salvation. The holiest of holy places associated with Buddhism, Bodh Gaya, is situated in the Gaya district of Bihar. Ashok refers to this place as Sambodhi. Temples and monasteries of nearly all countries where Buddhism has flourished have come up near and around the Mahabodhi temple, forming an integral part of Bodh Gaya. The Thai temple and monastery is startling in the sunlight. Gold lacquered tiles, sloping terraces, roofs, curved dragon forms, making graceful silhouettes against the sky. The Japanese have built a colossal Buddha, which is by far the most imposing and awe-inspiring image at Bodh Gaya. The Buddha in all his glory, giving the message of peace, love, piety, a message from the land of his birth to the world. I leave for Banaras, the oldest city of India. Nearly eight kilometers from this ancient seat of Indian culture is Sarnath. In medieval inscriptions, the place is referred to as the Dharma Chakra Parivartan Vihar. It was here that Tathagat expounded the Four Noble Truths. In view of the sanctity and importance of Sarnath, it continued to be a leading center of Buddhism throughout the centuries. The once ancient capital of the powerful Magadha Empire, Rajgir was known as Rajgriha, meaning the home of royalty. It was also called Basumati, Giriviraj, and Kushagrapur. Lord Buddha spent several rainy seasons, Varshavas, in this area, spending time on Githkut Hill and preaching to his disciples. Vaishali was once the capital city of the Lichavis, one of the earliest republics of the world. Lord Buddha visited this place three times in his life and chose to declare his approaching Nirvana and delivered his last sermon at Vaishali. The greatest patron of Buddhism, King Ashok, built a stoop and erected a pillar at Sachi. All kinds of Buddhist architectural forms can be seen here. Although the monument at Sachi now forms one of the most magnificent and perfect examples of early Buddhist art in India, the site seems to have no apparent connection with the traditional history of Gautam Buddha. Sachi remained a great center of Buddhism for more than a thousand years. This is evidenced by the numerous monuments belonging to all eras from the 3rd century BC to the 12th century AD. As I leave Sachi, my heart swells with an emotion which fills my soul with elation. The journey has been a revealing experience. I feel 
that I have set out on another journey. A journey from within.